I'm Lead Fingers from Street League Spec Drone Racing and today I'm going to show you how to assemble the Kari X frame that we sell in the Street League store so you can make awesome drones like this one. Let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is lay out all of our parts and make sure we have all of them. We have a mid plate with the press nuts installed. We have a bottom plate. We have two vertical carbon canopies. We have four arms. We have a rear link, a front link, and our hardware set. And we'll get into the hardware set in just a second. For the hardware set, the 15 14 millimeter M3 button head bolts are for attaching the arms and the rear and front link to the mid plate and the bottom plate. Your two 8 millimeter M3 bolts and your two nylock nuts are for attaching your flip fin to the canopy. The 18 12 millimeter bolts are for attaching the nine aluminum standoffs to your two pieces of vertical carbon for the canopy. So you might notice that there's two spares. These 10 millimeter M3 button head bolts are actually spares. This is so if you're having trouble with these 12 millimeter bolts in the rear link, you can swap them out for 10 millimeter and they fit a little bit nicer, but you sacrifice a little bit of thread. Now that we've gone over what all the hardware does, let's assemble the frame. So the first thing I like to do is take two of my 14 millimeter bolts and install them on the outer arm mounting hole in the bottom plate on the table just like you see here. Then we're going to install two of the arms. And you can see on the arms there's this locking mechanism where all the arms meet in the center. As long as all of these are facing the same direction, they'll work fine. So you can actually install them this way or this way, but as long as you're consistent on all of your arms. So you can see I'm going to have mine set up like this. So this arm will be installed just like that. And you'll see how they lock in the middle. For now, only install the rear two arms. Leave the front ones out. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our mid plate, press nuts up, and we're going to install it on top of the bottom plate. Once you have those bolts lined up, hold it together and flip the drone over. Now that you have the drone flipped over, you're going to take these two bolts and you're going to install them, but only about a turn each. You want them to be firmly within the threads in the press nuts, but not tight yet, and you'll see why in just a second. So now you can see I have the bolts installed, but everything is loose. And we want that because it's going to allow us to install our front link into the frame. So if you look at the front of the frame, you'll see this little bean-shaped cutout. And that coincides with this bean-shaped key in the front link. And there's also a slot in the front link that keys directly into this on the frame. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up the front of this and you're going to install your front link into there. And you'll see the front link keys directly in to the carbon and the mounting hole lines up and we're ready to install the rest of our arms. So now because these arms are loose and can pivot we can check the direction of our locking mechanism. So ours are facing this direction so both of our arms need to be installed with this face up. So it may take a little bit of wiggling the arms around to get everything to match but once you have them they should just slip right in and all the holes will line up. So now that I have the four arms installed with their outer mounting bolts, I can just take the rest of them and we'll just slot them in. And we're going to put all of these in and thread them into the press nut, but we're not going to tighten everything yet because it's just best practice to get the whole frame assembled before you snug everything down. All right, now that I have all the bolts installed and everything's just snug down, we're not tightening anything yet. You'll notice that you have three more 14 millimeter screws. One of those is going to go right here to lock in the front link, and the last two are going to go here and here to attach the rear link to the frame. So now you have to install the rear link. This flat portion will get installed in between these two pieces of carbon, and then this round portion is where you will press in your 35 millimeter standoff. 
All right, now we have the rear link installed and we can tighten up all of these bolts. I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna leave these two for last. Do not tighten these yet because there's a little gotcha with those. All right, now I have my front link and all my arm bolts snugged up and I can flip the frame over and you can see all of these bolts come just barely to the top of the press nuts. So what we wanna be careful of when we're tightening these two bolts for the rear link, we'll actually be able to smash this TPU between the carbon and it'll end up flexing this mid plate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten these two bolts until the bolt sticks out of the press nut the exact same as these arm bolts where it's a hard carbon on carbon connection. I can't flex. So I just want to mention that Make sure you be careful when you're tightening these two because you don't want to add a bunch of flex into your mid plate. So now that our frame is assembled, it's time to move on to the canopy. So the canopy assembly is pretty easy. Each one of these holes is going to have one of the 12 millimeter bolts going through it into the 35 millimeter standoff and that will attach these two pieces of carbon together. So now you can see our canopy is assembled and we have two standoffs and a couple bolts left over. So these standoffs will actually get installed into these 3D prints and they will work as the hinges for this canopy. So this handoff you can press through this 3D print and the other standoff will get pressed through that 3D print. There is infill in my 3D prints because I just whipped these together for a demo video but we have them sized where they fit really well. It shouldn't be too difficult to get these standoffs pressed in. So the final note I would like to make in this assembly video is the Kari X that we sell in the Street League store has a 35 millimeter standoff canopy, which is wider than the original model. So that necessitates that you install the front link first and then hinge the canopy backwards into place. Right? On the original one, you could leave the back and hinge the front up, but in this model, you have to do the opposite. Front gets installed first, rear hinges up when you need to access your stack. So this is what the canopy looks like installed with no prints. You would add an additional bolt in the bottom and on the rear link for your hinges. One last thing I would recommend is have a two millimeter traditional hex key like this for taking this bolt out because the arm is a little bit in the way. So if you take an, a hex driver like this it's a little difficult to get in there because the arm is where you want to get your wrench. So I just keep an additional one of these in my tool kit and it makes removing this bolt really easy. And then all assembled with all the prints, this is what it looks like. You can see there's the top canopy that has the 35 millimeter standoffs pressed through it. There is the front link here with the 35 millimeter standoff. And then I run an alternative rear link that's available on the GitHub that raises this bolt up above the mid plate and it just gives you a few more millimeters of stack space. But same thing, the 35 millimeter standoff gets pressed through the print and then the bolt goes into it. I also have these beautiful arm prints that are done by free. We should have some in the Street League store soon but these are totally optional, you don't need them. I just think they look cool and I wanted them on my quad. You can see I'm missing my flip fin right now but they're easy to install. I got one for showing and one for going. And those bolts go right down into the M3 nuts that are installed underneath that print. If we look underneath, you can see I run a battery shield on all of my quads. I like running the battery shield. I need the extra weight anyway, and it's a great way to make sure my packs last as long as possible. This is an old battery sh shield that I modified so it would work with the Kari, but there are new files that you can find on the GitHub to print your own battery shields. One last note, the Street League Store Kari doesn't have recessed bolts under here. So that is specifically because you can print yourself a battery shield and then your battery pad goes onto the shield. And then this goes here and that will protect your battery from the bolts. You can see it actually helps lock the shield into the bottom of the frame really nice and I don't have any issues with batteries ejecting using this system. So I've really enjoyed using the Kari. It's an excellent frame. It flies great. It's got good aerodynamics. 
it's durable and the coolest part is whenever I need to service it, I take two bolts out and it flips up and I can access my whole stack. Thank you for watching my video about how to assemble the Kari X frame from the Street League store. I hope you have a great time flying it and I look forward to seeing you at the next race.